Hey, I'm Jake, and today I'm talking about this stack of comic pages that I drew and why you need to finish your project. I finished it. I finished Inking Skyheart. It's been about two months, over two months since my last video, and this is the reason why I've been putting all my extra, like, so much time into just getting this thing done and off of my plate. This is a stack of 126 inked, man, this is so hard to like handle. This is a stack of 126 inked pages and it took me over two years to finish this. So in today's video, I'm gonna flip through these ink drawings. Uh, if you don't want any spoilers for Skyheart, you can just listen to what I have to say and not watch the video. But if you wanna see all the, the inking and hard work that went into these pages, uh, check out me flipping through these. And I wanna talk about why you need to finish your project. Uh, and it's not so that you have a finished project and it's not so that you can post it online and, and show people, but it's for some other very important reasons. All right, to the art desk. All right, so two years, I spent two years working on this. Uh, in that time, it wasn't me working on this 24 seven all, you know, every day, all week. Um, but there was, you know, I had other projects that I had to do uh, that I was committed to. So. The, the, but the time that I would normally carve out for freelance work, I was working on Skyheart when I could. Um, and so, you know, so it took two years to do. And in that time, I had a lot of serious doubts about the story that I was writing, about me as a storyteller. Um, I had doubts about my strengths as a character artist. I felt like I couldn't... Um, I couldn't draw human characters as well as I wanted to. I'd see other artists draw these amazing, they could just draw human humanoid characters, like really cool and do the expressions and everything. And my strengths lie more in you know, vehicle design or robot design and things like that, or even more cartoony animal designs. And the characters in, in, in Skyheart are a lot more uh, human looking. And so I, I was doubting my abilities to be able to, to draw them in an appealing and a, consist, a consistent way as well. Um, so I had doubts about that. And then I also had big doubts about my abilities as a, a, a dialogue writer is to write you know, the, the words that they're actually gonna be, be speaking and that, that you would be reading. Um, and so all those things, those doubts were nearly debilitating at times. You know, I've read so many amazing graphic novels that I sometimes wonder who am I to contribute anything to this medium you know I have no business <laughs> when there's greats out there like you know uh, Mobius or um, Otomo who wrote Akira and drew Akira and Mike Mignola right and and um, you know Miyazaki and Nausicaa um, these are like some of my favorite favorite comics even like elf quest i grew up reading elf quest and i love that so much and i was just thinking like how could i create anything that that matches you know, what these comics have been able to do um and so because of that there's there were a few times that i just had to pause production on skyheart take a step back and think about it just think about what i was doing before i cautiously resumed work on it again yeah, so because of my hangups with my personal abilities, I kept putting off drawing Skyheart for years. Uh, I originally came up with the idea around 2000, uh, 2001. It wasn't the idea that it is now, but it was like the kernel of the idea. And, um, and, and I kept putting it off because I wanted to get better at my craft. And I would work on a comic and work on different aspects of storytelling that I feel like I needed to work on and drawing that I needed to work on and try to work that out in these short comics that I was doing. Um, and I think that's a fair approach. You want to get good at something or at least proficient at something uh, by practicing on a smaller scale before you take on something really big, like a full graphic novel or a graphic novel series or whatever the big thing is that you want to do. But the question is, when is a creator ever really good enough? When you compare yourself to your influences and your idols, you always come up short. 
And at some point, you just have to start your big project, realizing that if your idol, you know, the person that you look up to, that if they waited until they felt like they were good enough, they would have never started either. You know, at, at one point they were in your exact shoes, um, thinking, "Am I good enough? Am I able to do this?" But for whatever reason, they saw, uh, they worked through that, and they and they made their thing. They created their thing. And actually, many uh, many creators that that have created something truly genius or or really beautiful. It wasn't their first time creating it. They had done so many smaller projects that led up to that. And even in the case of like uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, right? Harper Lee, it's her only book that she's published. I guess there's a second, Go Set a Watchman came out now. But um, that book went through years and years of revisions. She submitted her her, um, her transcript to editors and they said okay this is a good start but they worked on it and worked on it and she showed it to um, other people that helped her work on it as well like her contemporaries like Capote right and and they worked together and they made you know she got better as she worked on it it wasn't that she just sat down started typing out To Kill a Mockingbird and created that masterpiece it was something that actually went through went through many revisions. So sometimes when you read a piece of, you know, perfection or you you observe something that someone's created and you can't see any flaws in it, know that it didn't just come out that way. It actually it took time and effort and practice and many many revisions to get that. So don't let that kind of thing hang you hang, uh, be a hang up for you. So you need to start your project, right? But starting a project and finishing a project are two different things. Just because I made a resolve to start making Skyheart didn't mean that I had overcome my self-doubt. I knew that I needed to just start working on it. That's why I actually I, I launched a Kickstarter and asked for all this this money up front to create it because <laughs> I, I kind of knew that if I didn't put myself in, in that dire situation, you know, in that extreme situation, I'd probably still be sitting here like, oh, I'm not good enough to do it. I'm not good enough to do it. But because I made myself accountable to other people, um, I had to, I had to work on it. I had, I had to start the project and finish it. Self-doubt can wreak havoc on a project. Concerns about your abilities are completely legitimate. I'm not saying throw out those concerns, but I, I don't think those concerns should stop a project from happening. And what's amazing is as I flip through these drawings now uh, in these Skyheart pages, I see a really cool story unfolding. Um, I, I see an artist. I look at it and I see an artist. I'm, I'm stepping back and not looking at it. I drew it, but I was looking at it as something that was created. And I see an artist gaining confidence in his character drawings. And I also see dialogue flowing more naturally um, towards the end of the book than as it did at the, at the beginning of the book. All of that came about because I pushed through and kept working on it. So I'm a firm believer that you learn more from doing something than from just studying something. Um, however, when you're lost in the weeds of a project, it's hard to remember that. Uh, I clearly forgot about that uh, during the duration of this graphic novel, and and I had to remind myself, you know, you're you're uh, you're gonna learn as you create this thing. So that's the reason I'm making this video, is because I wanted to remind others that regardless of how you feel about the quality of the work that you're doing on a project. Stopping that project until you get better is not the answer. That's not how you're going to get better. There's a Roman emperor named Marcus Aurelius. He was a part-time philosopher, too. He's a fascinating historical figure. You should read up on him. And really, has a, his writings are just great insights on how to live your life. Um, but he wrote on this, on this exact subject. subject. What, he, what he said was, The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. So in my case, my impediment to action were my abilities. They were my impediment to finishing Skyheart. I didn't feel like I was good enough to finish Skyheart. They were the roadblock standing in my way of finishing the book. Ironically, 
me finishing the book was the only way for me to remove that roadblock and, and to get better at the craft. So in short, getting better at the craft happens only by working on and finishing things. That's the outlook that's going to see me through the next 100 pages on this project that I'm doing. And that's the outlook that's going to see you through finishing whatever it is that you've stopped working on because you felt like you weren't good enough and you wanted to be better. You wanted to be you know, a master at this craft before you, you finished this project or started this project. So just remember, the only way you're going to get better is by actually finishing that thing that you're working on. All right, everybody, thank you for watching this video. If you have uh, any sort of input on the thing that I talked about today, please leave it in the comments. I love the discussion that happens in the comments on these videos. I love to see the, the interaction and the, and the community that's happening there. I wanna say thank you to everyone who's subscribed. I crossed 100,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. I can't even, I didn't even set out to like be a YouTuber. And so it's, it just amazes me that, that I am saying things that people are responding to and I, and I love that. I wanna, I wanna let you know why I don't post videos every week or multiple times a week. And sometimes I don't post videos every month. It's because I don't wanna waste your time. I don't wanna just post a video just because I have to get a video out there. Here's my, my Jake Parker YouTube promise, and it's this, that I'm only gonna post a video when I have time to make a video, when it's not getting in the way of other projects, and I'm only gonna post a video when I have something really important that I wanna say, or something that I really wanna talk about. So I'm not gonna waste your time with just a video because I gotta post a video this week so I can uh, make everybody happy. Uh, there are gonna be videos when I have time and when I have something important to say. Lastly, if you want to get a copy of Skyheart, you can go to skyheartcomic.com and there'll be a, a place there where you can order the book. Um, if you want to get updates on the project as it's ongoing and, and as you continue to work on it, uh, just sign up for the email list there and I send out emails every once in a while just showing people the progress and, and how things are coming there. So thank you everybody and I will see you next video.